Today I'm going to be covering the install of my Crow Enterprises 6-point Camlock SFI certified harness. Before I go on to the install, I'm going to explain why I specifically chose a Crow harness because I get asked that question a lot. Uh, the first reason was that because they're a local California based business and I always like supporting local businesses. Um, in order to get this harness, all I did was drive down there, tell them exactly how I wanted um, all the aspects of the harness and they said, all right, just give us 45 minutes and we'll have your harness ready. And that to me is just awesome. The second reason I went with Crow is that they have, I think the most customizable harness that I've ever seen. So just on the colors alone, you have black and then you also have gray, red, blue, and then purple, which no other harness company I believe offers purple besides Crow and the purple looks really sick. I almost got that one. They're also really customizable and little features. So for instance, these pull tabs right here are usually red. They asked me if I wanted red or black. I wanted everything just black and gray on this thing. So I got black for these ones, cam lock or the regular latch style. Um, they have the pull down straps as well as I think the pull in straps. They have extra long versions, I believe, of the individual straps. So in case you need a little bit longer than usual, they can do that. They have five point, six point, all the different points. So it's just crazy. And I haven't really seen any other company that offers that many variety of little features and little details that you can customize on there. So there was a plus two for going with Crow. Third reason I went with Crow is that these are all SFI certified and that certification is only good for a certain amount of years. Now usually what you have to do is just buy a brand new harness to replace your old one, but Crow actually offers a recertification process. So basically you just send your belts in and then they recertify it for a fraction of the cost. I think these seatbelts brand new are about 200 bucks. And I think the recertification process for this is I think um, $60 or so. So you save a ton of money being able to recertify your harness rather than the majority of other companies where you end up just having to um, buy a whole new harness. <clears throat> so that was reason three. Reason four is that they have uh, racing gloves, shoes, um, suits, as well as a whole bunch of other driving accessories. So the thought in my mind with that is that it would be so much nicer looking as well as professional having all matching racing gear inside of the cockpit of the car. So I hope that answers your question on why I went with a Crow Enterprises harness and now we can actually move on to the install. And just a heads up, please excuse my nails. I have been painting my car, so there does tend to be quite a bit of overspray on my hands. It's hard to get off. So the first step in installing the harness is going to be installing the shoulder straps, which are those two right there. Now these two are a fairly simple process. They simply wrap around the harness bar on your roll cage or roll bar or just the harness bar that you have in your car. You simply wrap them around and adjust them to the proper length when they're sitting on you. Any method for wrapping around the harness is shown in this diagram right here. Fairly simple process and doesn't take long at all. And something to take note of when you're installing your harness is that you want to make sure that you have the proper angle over here with your harness installed. Different racing organizations have different rules on how low the harness angle can be, but usually the safe zone is no lower than 20 degrees below level. And that is very important in order to prevent spinal compression. Moving on from installing the shoulder harness, we're going to move on to installing the anti-submarining belt, also known as the uh, crotch belt. This anti-submarining belt only comes on a five point or a six point harness, and that is because this makes up the five and six points. As you can see, there are two individual belts here, and so therefore this is a six point harness. If you were to have a five point harness, there would just be one single belt connecting to this point. Now the way that it was explained to me between the difference between a five point and a six point belt is that because there are two straps here on the six point belt, it is much comfortable in your groin region when you have an individual belt like this compared to just having a single belt running right down your crotch. Um, so this is a little bit more comfortable than just running a uh, standard five point with a single strap. Besides that, it is very important to run either a five point or a six point harness compared to a four point or a three point harness. And that is because this additional belt over here prevents submarining. So it is a major safety component to have that five or six point element. So in order to install this, we're gonna remove the cushion on our seats, make it a little easier. <laughs> Please excuse the dirt, but anyways, now that you have this hole exposed in your bucket seat for the anti-submarine belts, um, what I do is I just take a paint marker and I mark directly downward from here and I mark the two endpoints so I know exactly where the opening for the anti-submarine belt is in the bucket seat. And I also make sure to have my seat in the exact position that I would be driving the car in. Based on those marks, I can move on to drilling the holes to mount my harness. Now, just like with the shoulder strap, you're going to refer to whatever racing organization that you're building your car to compete in and you're going to follow the instructions on what angle to mount your harness at. Now for formula drift specifications right here, I have basically perfectly under at zero degrees to a, I'm going to call that positive 20 degrees. So 20 degrees forward and in front of the hole. So before I drill the hole in the chassis itself, I'm going to make sure that my markings fall within that zero to 20 degree range. I've determined that my harness needs to attach somewhere 
along where this spot weld is, the line where this is at. So I follow that and I can figure out where is the clear path to drill my hole and mount the eye bolt for the harness. So as you can tell, I can't do it over the frame rail because that's not gonna work from underneath. Over here is the hump for the cat, so I don't wanna do it on there. I'm gonna keep it in this flat area. And uh, over here there's ridges, so basically I've figured out and determined by looking at that line that I can pretty much get one here and the other one right about there. So I'll now center punch it and then drill it out with a step drill bit because this cuts really clean through sheet metal. <laughs> Now that my two holes are drilled, I can go from underneath and then put the washer and then bolt it up. Also, since we've drilled a hole, we've now exposed metal. So I'm just gonna go spray a little bit of primer here. You're gonna wanna make sure you do the same thing in order to prevent future rust forming. This car will also be getting painted a month from now. So we'll take it all apart and uh, really get to paint it. But it's a temporary solution. We're just gonna use some quick primer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this eye bolt first, then it's gonna be the floor, then it's gonna be the washer, followed by the locking split washer, followed by the nut. And the floor is gonna be right in between this area. Take my ratchet. So I'm gonna take a screwdriver, put it in here, keep it straight. That's the install. I'll repeat it on the other side. Okay, so this is what makes up the six point and quick attach fastener. Attach it like so. And then adjust the lengths accordingly to fit through. The two points going to the floor, those are coming through the bottom of the bucket seat now. Now that the anti-submarining belt is installed and the shoulder belts are installed, next we can move on to doing the lap belts. You're going to have to check with whatever regulations and figure out what angle you want to get. Easy way to tell the angle is to get it in a, an angle square like this. You can set it up so zero is flat over here and you just kind of read off the angle with the pivot point and you can figure out how much angle your harness is at. So ours right now is at 55 degrees, which our rule book allows a minimum of 50 degrees and a max of 80. So we're good as far as the angle here. And that's actually using the OEM mounting location on this side. So I'm just gonna line it up on that side as well, drill a hole to the trans tunnel and mount. Here's a view under the car of how the eyelets look once they're installed. And take note that there is quite a bit of extra thread on them. And depending on how low your car is, this may be a potential scraping issue. And obviously you don't want your harness eyelets to be scraping against the ground. So if there are extra threads like this, you can just take an angle grinder to them and just shorten them down. We have the shoulder straps wrapped around the cage. We have anti-submarine belts bolted to the floor under the seat using Crow hardware. We then have one lap belt that is bolted into the OEM seatbelt location on the chassis. And then the other lap belt is bolted down to the floor, again using Crow hardware. The only thing left with the install is to make sure that everything is properly adjusted and sits tight and right on your body. So of course you don't want this sitting super down low in your crotch area. You don't want this thing sitting all the way high up in your chest. And of course you wanna make sure that all of your individual belts are tight and that nothing is super loose. 
Other than that, that finishes up the install of the Crow 6-point SFI certified harness. I hope this video helped you guys out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bim bim bim